Hello, dear friends. May God bless all of you. And may the Holy Spirit, the guide who guided the Lord Jesus to victory on the cross, the guide of those who walk by faith in the Word of God, the guide who leads us to the kingdom of God, may he guide the understanding, your mind, our minds, so that we may know what to choose, what to choose. This is very nice because we don't always make our choices according to our mind, to our thought that is doing what is right. Sometimes we think right, we think of the things of God, but in the moment to choose, to choose what will give us pleasure, we end up using the heart. The heart then is the one taking control and then we make the wrong choices. But when we have the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the Holy Spirit, He guides our thoughts. He conducts us. He brings answers so that we can make the right choices for our lives throughout our entire lives. And that's why we talk a lot about people receiving the seal, the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Because without Him, you don't know what's best for your own life. There are two options. Only two options we have. Either good or evil. Nothing else. When God created Adam and Eve, He gave them only one option, the option to do good, even though He had placed the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the midst of the garden to show men and to test them, to see if they were really going to obey His voice. He already knew what was going to happen, but still He made it very clear that the choices, the option is ours. He created the angels with the right as well to even rebel against Him. And that's what happened to Lucifer. So God is perfectly Let's say he's a Democrat. He lets us choose, opt, what to think, for example. What should we think? What we should cultivate within our heads, in our spirit, so that then you may make the right choice. Because when you think... You consider things, you reason, you evaluate, and then you decide. But when a person doesn't have the Holy Spirit, when a person doesn't have the mind of the Lord Jesus, then they make any choice, anyhow. Oh, let me... They even follow their heart, and then... That's where they get wrong because they are deceived by their eyes. The eyes pass the information to their heart. The deceitful heart makes the person choose what is wrong, evil. And then they suffer because our lives depend on our choices. That's what happened to Adam and Eve. They lived in paradise. They had everything, everything. Their life was perfect. They had no marriage problems, no sicknesses, no infirmities. They didn't lack money. They lacked nothing. There was only peace. They lived in the plenitude of peace. 
But when they touched the tree of life, when they touched that tree which God had reserved only to himself, then they tasted, they tasted the knowledge of evil. They didn't know evil. They didn't know sin. And they were at peace, in perfect peace. They needed nothing. However, from the moment that they had access to the other side of the coin, which was evil, then they wanted to know it. And from then on, human beings were born with this DNA of knowing good and evil. And how do they decide between good and evil? They have to think. They have to think. And if the person thinks the way God does, as it is written, the scripture says, the Holy Scriptures is the manual for life. When you read the Bible and you base your life, you sustain your life, you make decisions for your life according to the word of God, it's impossible for things to go wrong. It's impossible for you not to have or harvest the fruits of obedience, the fruits of the blessing, happiness. However, when the person chooses according to their eyes, according to what they heard, there are people who get pregnant by their ears, and then they make wrong decisions. When a person pays attention to their heart, which is deceitful, they choose wrong, and then they will suffer the consequences. So many people also say, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God at all. He doesn't exist. If he did exist, isn't God good? Okay, so if he really existed, look, I wouldn't be suffering this way. Well, but you made your wrong choices. What do you want? You want to sow. You want to choose what is wrong. You want to choose sin and have, and have God's permission to reap what is right, what is fair. No, because God will not match or combine with you. God will not share his good with the evil that you choose. No, you chose evil, you are going to harvest the fruit of evil. If you chose good, God will be with you. But if you choose evil, then obviously evil will destroy you. This is how life is, dear friends. Bishop, what do I do? You may ask, what do I do to resolve my life? What do I do to resolve this problem once and for all? Firstly, do not count on anybody. Do not wait on anyone except exclusively on God. Because God is the source of what is good. He is the source of what is good. And the devil is the source of evil. If you choose according to God, he is with you. But if you choose according to the devil, he will also be with you. He will be with you and your life will be ruined. So what do I do, Bishop? How can I choose according to God. Then, the word of God teaches us. It teaches how we should make our choices without the need of depending on A, B, or C, a politician, parents, children, family members, husband, wife, no one. You will depend exclusively on yourself and above all, the good one that is God. Look at the advice that he gives you who want to change your life. You want to change your life, don't you? Praise God. 
then this is God's advice. God, through the Apostle Paul, gives us the tip. He says like this. Whatever things, whatever things are true, whatever things are true, that, that is established upon the truth, on truth, everything that is true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So we have to think according to what is good, not just what's good for you or for you and your partner. No, it's the good of all. It's the good of all. So everything that is true, God is truth. God is the word of truth. Truth is truth here in Brazil, in the whole world. Wherever you go, the truth is the truth. So there is no, you know, making a way to change the truth, to distort the truth, to take advantage, to make more money. No, you have to be truthful. What is right is right. What's wrong is wrong. What is right is of God. What is wrong is of the devil. What is truthful is of the devil. What is false, what is a lie, what is deceitful is of the devil. So you have to base your life, you have to fundament your life on what is right, what is fair, what's clean, what's pure, what is orderly. For example, just an example to make this simple and easy for everyone to understand. For example, you get married, you married somebody. Why did you marry? You married because God established marriage. This union, the matrimony is the most sacred institution on the face of the earth. The holy matrimony, holier than the church even. Because if the matrimony is not holy, then there is no church. If there is no matrimony, then the church does not exist. So you got married. Praise God. Why did you get married? Because your soul aspire. Our souls long for another soul. A soul that will share life with us. Everything that is good, everything that is true, that is fair. But when the soul that you marry with chooses falsehood and you want to walk in truth, then there will be conflicts. There will be unhappiness. There will be problems, headaches. There will be fights. And sometimes even femicide. Isn't it true? The husband kills the wife or the wife kills the husband. So these sort of things happen. Why? Because there is no compatibility between good and evil. Either you belong to good or to evil. Those who are good are allied with God. Those who are evil are allied with Satan. Who is the world allied with? With the devil. Most people are allied with Satan, with hell. And that's why this world is a living hell. But when a person knows Jesus, who is the good one, he's the son of God, who came into this world to give his life for those who want to do good, to succeed, those who want to do good for eternity, not only in this world, but to do good for eternity. Then these people are saved and separated by God. 
they are separated to God because God is good. So, if you want to change your life, do you want to change your life indeed? Then don't depend on anybody. Don't follow anyone's advice. Follow the advice of the Word of God. When we speak here daily, we teach the Word of God, not my Word, not my thought. Of course, that I fully agree with it, and that's why I work with it. But it's not my thought. It's the thought of God. It's God's mind. If we choose to follow God's advice, it's impossible to not break through. It's impossible. You, you want to see one thing? Just for you to, to check that for yourself. When you do something wrong, when we do something wrong, what happens in our mind? Doubt comes in straight away. Doubts bring fears, anxieties, worries, weaknesses. Frailty, yes or no? Isn't it true? Very well. When you do what is right, fair, when you do what is correct, you make the right, fair, truthful decision, then you do that and you become strong. You are invincible, unshakable. You are certain of what you are doing because you did something that is aligned, that matched God. You are married to God in that decision. But when you do something wrong and you are in doubt, you become weak because you did something that matches the devil. The devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. But who chooses life with abundance or death? It's you. Only you can choose for yourself and nobody else. So you choose Jesus, if you follow him, then you are going to think as Jesus did. You are going to speak as he did. Instead of speaking bad words and nonsense and to say silly things all the time, you are going to speak what is right, what is fair, what's honest, what sows good. The word has power, right? When you speak good words, words that are based on the word of God, you sow what is good, the good seed. So when you speak of the things of God, you sow faith, you sow good. And if you sow good, what are you going to reap? You're going to reap good. If you live according to the word of of what is true, of what is good, what is right and clean and honest, then you are going to reap the fruits of, of this sowing. If you sow what is bad though, then you are going to reap what is not good. You become weak because when the person sows what is good, when the person practices what is good, they are strong. They are strong and unshakable because they live according to the faith in what is written, the word of God. But when they sow what is bad, then they are weak, they are frail, they may have a diploma, they may have wisdom, they may have a high IQ, but their life will be total defeat. Why? Because they are lost within themselves. Because everything depends on what we believe, what we think, how we act in our day-to-day -day life. So my life does not depend on anyone except only and exclusively on God. So... When we hear the word of God, we hear the word of what's good. We follow what's good, what is fair, what is right, what's honest, what's true and clean, what is of good report, what has virtue. So God will guide you. For example, in my case, he guided me to Esther. He chose Esther for me. So we are happy because... We match, we combine with the same thought, the same faith, the same God, the same good. 
so we live at peace. But if I had chosen my wife, my future wife, I was going to regret, I was going to suffer, because how can light combine with darkness? How can what is right combine with what's wrong? How is it possible for the righteous to match with the unrighteous? So when marriage is done between good and evil, a person belongs to what is good, and they married one that belongs to evil, of course their life will be a living hell inside their home, and their children will be the fruit of this living hell. Can you imagine what's going to be like? It's what the world is. The world is like this. Therefore, dear friends, if you want to change your life, accept this advice, which is not mine, is not from the Apostle Paul, it's God's, the Spirit of of God speaks to you right now saying the following whatever things when it says whatever things then there is no exception whatever things are true whatever things are true whatever things are noble and noble here is not just for you to give the right change in the store no to be noble is to think in a noble way, with honesty. When you think with honesty, you wish your neighbor well. You want the best for them. Because you love God, God loves you. And He lives with you. And those who love God and have God within them, they love their neighbor, which is the first and second greatest commandment. First, to love God above all things. And second, to love your neighbor, your neighbor as yourself, which is the case of marriage. That's how marriage is. Therefore, dear friends, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, for example, you are going to marry someone, and if you feel that they lie, and you speak the truth, then forget it. This marriage won't work. You may throw a big party, you may have a lot of money. However, the mixture of true with lies end up and everyone gets dirty and starts living lie. That's the reality. Do not expect the truth to prevail or your, your life, you walk in truth, and you will prevail over the person that lives in lies, except if you sacrifice your life for this person. Even though they are lying, they deceive, they cheat, they are fake, and the problem will be for you to bear, to live with a person like this, expecting this person to convert to the truth eventually, then you have to be patient and perseverant, etc. And not everyone has that. Not everyone is willing to do that. Isn't it true? Not everyone is perseverant. There's a moment that the person gets tired. Okay, I don't want it anymore. It's over. Then they divorce. Okay, it's easy to divorce. Then let's divorce and resolve the problem. But the problem is not resolved because then you already had a child, a son, a daughter. And then you have to resolve. You marry someone else, but you have to be resolving problems with the previous marriage. It's a living hell. I think it's a living hell. I've never been through this, but I've seen that a lot. But the truth is that everything that is true, if you are truthful, then look for someone who is also truthful. If not, you will suffer. Whatever things are true, Whatever things are just, imagine you just and honest. You marry someone who is dishonest and unjust. It won't work. Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, you marry someone who is impure. You marry someone who is impure and you are pure. It, it won't work. Will it work? It won't. Whatever things are lovely, you are that kind of person that has good eyes towards the person who is with you, but that person is cruel, impure, they are not lovely, 
you marry them, so you have to bear, you have to live in this tribulation because you led yourself to this tribulation because you knew that that person was not lovely, but you married them anyways because you based your decision on, on the appearance. The guy was muscled, the girl was beautiful, wonderful, but later on you found out that she was not, he was not lovely. Whatever things are of good report, whatever things are of good report, if you marry someone that you have a bad report about, what do you expect? You marry someone who is an humanizer, everyone knows that. Or he, she loves being with other men, they like being with several men. Okay, so how can you resolve this problem? Then you are going to have problems and tribulations. And then later on you cry and blame God. Oh my God, my God. Oh, come on, you chose to marry someone that there was a bad report about. And now you are complaining that I'm the one to blame? No, you reaped what you sowed. And there's no other way. You cannot mock God. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap, whether this person is of God or not. They will reap what they sowed. There's no doubt about that. If you marry someone of good report, you are a person of good report, and you marry someone of good report as well, you'll be happy. But if you marry someone of a bad report, then it's over. If there is... so. In all this, if there is any virtue, there is this as well. If there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, you have to see virtue and praiseworthy as well. They meditate on these things. You see, dear friends, that life is not easy. To make choices is not easy. Not easy. What you sowed yesterday, you are reaping today. What we sowed yesterday, we are reaping today. What we are sowing today, we are going to reap tomorrow. There's no doubt about that. So, those who are led by the Spirit of God, those who have the mind of Christ, they have the understanding of what is true and what is fake, what's a lie. They know what is pure and what's impure. They know what is of good report and what's of bad report. They know what is pure and what's impure. So this person that has such understanding from God, the mind of Christ, what will they choose? They will choose everything that God would choose if he was in their place. Do you want to change your life, dear friends? Start, start changing your thoughts. Start changing the way you see life, you see things. Start changing the way that you are instead of waiting for others. Instead of you wait for others. Oh, I want to get married to be happy. If you want to get married to be happy, you will be unhappy. Because if you want to marry, thinking that you will be happy because you want to be happy, this won't work. You have to marry in the following way. I want to get married to make someone happy as I am happy. So you choose the person that will make you, that will enjoy happiness, enjoy in partnership with you. So you want to be happy, then marry someone thinking of making them happy. Then things will change. Even still, you have to fight. But always following God's advice. You understood what I meant, right? Well, your life starts here in your mind, in your head. No one, no one will make you happy except God himself through the Holy Spirit, when you fear, when you fear him, you fear God, then you follow his word, you obey his word, and his word teaches you to live, to choose, for, to make your choices. 
then you are going to sow what is good, you are going to sow what is right, what is fair, what is true, and you are going to reap what is true, fair, clean, what is of good report, etc., etc., etc. Amen? Did you understand? Your life depends on who? Your husband, your wife, your parents, your children, your boss, your money, your education. No. Your life depends only on what you think. If you think as God does, then you from God receive faith and courage and strength and vigor. You receive virtue to be independent. Independent from the world, from the things of this world and people, to depend exclusively on Him. And then He will guide you to the green pastures and to the still waters, which is peace. You, you have peace because you have faith, strength, courage. You will be truthful because you are doing what God wants you to do. You are doing what is right. Now, if it's the other way around, if you think as the world does, according to tactic, TikTok, whatever, if you want to think as so-and-so thinks, or those celebrities out there, the influencers, if you want to think as them, then probably you are going to suffer a lot. But if you want to think according to the word of God, you can be certain that this word, which is God, God in spirit, will guide you to the green pastures, meaning to prosperity and peace, to the still waters. Wow, you are going to break through. May God bless you all who want to think as God does. I see you tomorrow. May God bless you.